Hello everyone, this is Pampi Morandante and today I will be talking about powers, roots, and reciprocals. Here we go! Okay, so this is the beginning part. When a number is multiplied by itself, the result is the square of the original number. So let's say you have here 5 to the power of 2, then um, that is 5 times 5. The base here is 5 and 2 is the exponent. So, or the index, we multiply it by itself 2 times, so you have 25. And 25 here is what we call a perfect square, okay? Now, reversing the process, it gives us the square root. So what do you mean by square root, where it's coming from? By the way, this is where the concept comes in. The concept of fractional indi index or fractional indices comes in. What do you mean by that? Um... Meaning it is the power in fractional form, okay? So, how? Example, you have here the square root of 25. So, 25 here, by the way, is the radicand. And how come you have here 25 to the power of 1 half? It's because 25 here has a power of 1. And then, um, the denominator there, it's because this root here, meaning this square root, there is 2 there, okay? So, that's why you have here 1 over 2. So, it is understood that there is no number there in the radicand, in the radical sign. So, meaning it is 2, okay? And then, if there is 3, then this is another thing that's cubed, okay? So, here in this example, you have 25 to the power of 1 half. So, that's the meaning of that. And then, we simplify it. Remember that 25 can be also in... Um, Square form, I mean, when you get, find the factors, uh, 25 is 5 times 5, so 5 to the power of 2. And then, we cancel 2 there, okay? 2 times 1 half, so we have 5 to the power of 1, which is equal to 5. So, that's it. And, remember that um, for 25, we can also work with negative. Remember that negative 5 times negative 5 is equal to positive 25. And so, there you go, you square it. And then we do cancellation of 1 half and 2. And then the remaining there is negative 5. That's why for the square the root a number, there must be two possible values, the positive and the negative. So there you go. Next one is when a number is multiplied by itself and then by itself again, the result is the cube of the original number. So if I have here 5 to the power of 3, meaning you multiply 5 by itself, three times so you have five times five times five and that is equal to 125 and 125 here is an example of a perfect cube okay now reversing the process gives the cube root now if we get the cube root example the cube root, cube root of 125 remember that 125 can be expressed in exponential form which is 5 to the power of 3 and then um, cube root now can be expressed in exponential form um, as a fractional index, okay? So you have there, um, we multiply it to the power of one third and then we do cancellation. Uh, remember the law of indices or law of exponents, we multiply power to a power. Then there you go, five to the power of one, which is equal to five. So that's the meaning for the cube root, okay? Now, before we will proceed on simplifying or solving radical expressions, I want you to remember first the following um, perfect squares, okay, take note of this, and the perfect cube because these things, we will be needing them in our further study on simplifying radicals, okay? So don't forget about okay, it. Okay, now let's try to solve some problems about roots or we also call it radical expressions. So I have here a problem. Um, show the process in solving a given expression below the square root of 120 now remember as we recall on the perfect squares 120 is not a perfect square and so let's think of um, the factors of 120 wherein one of its factors is a perfect square so it's easy let's look, look at this okay so it's 4 times 30 okay and then we simplify the square root of 4 is 2 and then there you go we just affix the root of 30 since it's not um, a perfect square. But if you want to simplify the answer, if you want to get the correct, the exact value, then you can make use of the calculator and this is it. 
the approximated value of uh, square root of 20 or 2 square root of 30 in simplified form. And then there you go. That's 10.95. Okay. Okay, the next example here, we have the cube root of 32. Again, 32 is not a perfect cube. In that case, let's try to recall some of the perfect cubes. And there you go. 8 is one of the factors of 32. So we have the cube root of 8 times 4. And the cube root of 8 is 2. Then affix or just write beside 2 the cube root of 4. And then there you go, you can get the calculate, you can get the, the value of this in the calculator and it's approximated in two decimal places. So we have here 3.17. Okay, okay, next example here is we are going to simplify this expressions with fractional exponent or fractional index. Okay, the first one is 125 to the power of 4 over 3. So just simply by, um, um, how do we call this one? By just simply getting the factors of 125 okay um, 125 is a perfect cube so you have there 5 to the power of 3 and then we do cancellation of um, the exponents because we multiply power to a power and then there you go the remaining there is 5 to the power of 4 which is equal to 625 multiplying 5 by itself four times and on the other side you have, you have here 16 to the power of 3 over 4 you express 16 into 2 to the power of 4 and then we multiply the exponents we do the cancellation and then you have 2 to the power of 3 and that is equal to 8 because we multiply 2 by itself three times okay up next is about negative power and reciprocal okay what do you mean by this so let's have this uh, representation about negative power and reciprocal I have here x to the power of negative n that is equal to 1 over x to the power of n. Okay, so what do you mean by that? Meaning, if you have a negative index or a negative power, you just simply get the reciprocal of the base, okay? And then change the negative exponent to positive. So look at here. We have x, and what's the reciprocal of x? What do you mean by reciprocal? Okay, when we say reciprocal, if I have here, okay, Okay, that's reciprocal. Changing of the numerator and the denominator. So here we have x that is actually x over 1. And so that becomes 1 over x. So that's the reciprocal. And then as we do the reciprocal, as we get the reciprocal of the base, we change the sign from negative to positive. So that's it. Okay, so let's have an example. Okay, I have here... Work out the values of the given expressions, leaving your answer as fraction, as exact fractions. I have here 3 over 5 to the power of negative 2. So what we are going to do then, applying the concept. So the base here is 3 over 5. We will just get the reciprocal of the base, which is 5 over 3. And then we change the negative exponent to positive. We, we will only do that if the exponent is negative. We get the reciprocal of the base. So there you go. And then we simplify 5 to the power of 2 and then 3 to the power of 2. So that's equal to 25 over 9. So that's the final answer. Next one. So another problem here is 27 over 64 to the power of negative 2 over 3. Now the power is negative or the index is negative. And so we are going to get the reciprocal of the, of the base rather. So 27 over 64 becomes 64 over 27. Since we get the reciprocal already, then the sign changes to positive. The exponent, rather, changes to positive. And then we simplify. We express 64 into 4 to the power of 3 in exponential form. And then 27 into 3 to the power of 3. Then we distribute the exponent 2 third to the exponent inside so there you go we do multiplication of exponents and then we do cancellation and then the remaining is 4 to the power of 2 over 3 to the power of 2 which is equal to 16 over 9 okay so that's it thank you so much for watching bye bye see you again for my next topic